The text for today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 12. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. This is a busy time of year for Christians as we have much to celebrate and much to look forward to. As we approach the coming celebration of All Saints Day, for Christians, it is more than just the day following All Hallows' Eve, which we have come to know as Halloween, a time for trick-or-treating and neighborly camaraderie. Not to be confused or associated with secular Halloween celebration, All Saints' Day has a long and meaningful history, and celebrations and customs vary. For us, the day is observed by remembering and thanking God for all saints, both dead and living. It is a day to glorify Jesus Christ, who by his holy life and death has made the saints holy through baptism and faith. In the first and second centuries following the birth of our Lord, it became a practice for Christians to celebrate the death of a martyr, a Christian who steadfastly refused to renounce his or her faith in Jesus Christ. They did this with an all-night vigil on the anniversary of the martyr's death, which became known as the birthday, a celebration of the beginning of the martyr's eternal life in heaven. Eventually, as more of these celebrations were taking place, because more Christians were martyred, a common date of November 1st was appointed as All Saints Day, and eventually expanded to celebrate not just martyred Christians, but all Christians who had died and now live in the triumph of glory in heaven. In the text for today, the Apostle John shares a vision of heaven given to him by Jesus, wherein John sees a great multitude that no one could count of the souls of believers who have died and are now living in heaven. The astounding number of believers in heaven is more than we can even count. We are told that all of these people are the departed believers from every nation, every tribe, every people, and every language. In the vision, they are standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. While living on earth, these Christians had a faith-filled consciousness of God's presence. But in heaven, the presence of God is immediate all surrounding and everlasting. John says they are wearing white robes, pure and spotless, no stain of sin whatsoever. They are arrayed in the very righteousness of Jesus Christ. By the grace of God, righteousness bought and paid for with the blood of his Son, for the remission of sins. They are holding palm branches in their hands, like the Israelites had done during the Feast of Tabernacles, 
commemorating God's care during the wilderness journeys and his final gift of rest and restoration. So also do the souls of believers in heaven enjoy rest at last. The troubles of their wildernesses are ended. In a loud voice they cry out that salvation belongs to our God. There is only one owner of our eternal salvation. It is not the devil. It is not depression or sin or guilt. It is not worry or shame or fear. Those things do not own us. The God of salvation owns us. We are his own. He is the giver of eternal life. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. For now, in this veil of tears, we experience sorrow and grief and pain. These things are the result of sin in the world. But with the caring compassion of a parent's touch, God will put an end to all sadness, and we will live in the eternal joy of heaven. There will be no sin and no suffering. These joys belong to believers who have gone before us and whose souls are at rest in heavenly glory. Someday, we too will join them. Then on the last day, Jesus will come to resurrect from the dead all bodies of all people and the bodies of believers will be reunited with the souls of believers in heaven. And this is where our sinful nature, and knowing that we lead sinful lives, causes us to ask, how can I really know that there is something more than just a rotting body and a grave awaiting me? How can we know with certainty that we will enjoy an eternal life with God in heaven? We know because God has revealed it to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus has said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. The eternal fate of all believers has been revealed to us. Just as the Israelites had the land as a guarantee from God of the heavenly rest, so too do we have his promise of eternal life. We are comforted knowing that those who have gone before us are joyously living with God the Father in heaven. And because we have the hope and promise of God in his Son, we anticipate our birthday into eternal life, knowing that God always keeps his promises. We pray. O God of heaven, we rejoice this day in your eternal love and in your creation of heaven as the everlasting place of perfect companionship with you and all believers. Today, God, we give thanks to you for your saving grace in the life and death of all believers, whose souls now rest in the eternal glory of heaven. Keep us in the faith all our days, and reunite us with all the saints, that our joy that began on earth, may have no end in your heavenly kingdom. We pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen.